Hey everyone, it's Anna here and today's video is going to be all about learning the double half hitch. I've recently come to realize that so many people struggle with learning this knot. I've seen comments in Facebook groups, on my videos, I've seen people that I teach face to face that really struggle with it too. So I thought I would just put together some tips and tricks that I'm hoping will be helpful for you guys and that they will help you to finally learn this double half hitch knot. So first thing, I want to show you how to make that knot slowly and then I will go into explaining my five tips for making the knot um, work for you and then I also have a bonus tip at the end. So I've got a few short cords to practice with on my small dowel here. So I'm going to take that very first cord on the left. This is going to become my travel cord. And then all of these other cords will become my working cords. So I'll take that travel cord in the direction I want the knots to go. And then I'm taking that first cord next to it and I wrap it around that travel cord and then out through this loop. That's the first half of that knot. And then we do the same thing. So again, taking the end, wrapping it around the travel cord and out through this loop. And that's the second one. This is what makes it the double half hitch. And then I can continue the same thing with all the other cords. So taking the next one, looping it around the travel cord and pulling out through the loop and the second hitch around the cord, out through the loop, tighten. Next cord, first looping it around, out the loop and tighten. And then the next one around the cord, out the loop, and tighten. And that's how you make the double half hitch. All right, so that was how you make the knot itself, but I am sure you guys cannot wait for all the tips, so let's go into those. So my tip number one is what type of cord you should be using, and you saw me using the braided cord. So the cord that is um, you know, braided from the multiple strands, and it is a little bit stretchy. Now, the reason why I suggest that you practice with this cord is because how easy it is to undo all of the knots, and the cord isn't really affected. The cord stays as it is, it doesn't, hurt it so much as like the single strand or, or the three ply cord. So that's why I suggest when you practice double half hitch, use a braided cord. My tip number two is probably the most important one out of all of these, so pay attention. So you heard me use the terms travel cord and working cord, where the working cord is the cord that's making the knots around the travel cord. And it is super important that you keep always one of those cords in one hand. So the travel cord, you saw me, I'll just put this in a, in a little screen here. When I was doing the knot, I was holding the travel cord in my right hand the entire time. I'm not switching the cords in between my hands. I'm holding the travel cord in one and doing the hitches with the other hand. So one hand, one cord, the entire time you're working on that section. And so what I see people do is they keep like putting the cords in, in the other hand and, and then they switch again and that's what makes it so confusing and that's when the knot doesn't come out right because you're not holding the cords in the right place. And to help you with this one, making sure that you're keeping one cord in, in one hand, there are two more tips that I want to share with you. So tip number three, is use a different colored cord for the travel cord. When you're practicing, that is. Of course, you're not gonna do that in the project itself. 
So here I've added this pink cord where the first one, I just won't work with that at all. This pink cord is going to become my travel cord and I can very easily check always that in my right hand, I'm holding that travel cord and all of the other cords, the, the white ones, they are the working cords, the ones that are wrapping around that pink cord and making those double half hitches. So that should help. And in a similar matter, my tip number four, the travel cord doesn't necessarily need to be a cord. You can actually use another dowel instead. So here I am back with my white cords and I'm going to be holding the dowel in my right hand, just like that travel cord. And I will start adding the double half hitches onto the dowel. And again, here you can see that it would be really difficult for me to switch my hands now that one of them is actually holding a dowel and not just a cord. And so you just keep working with it as if it was a cord, but I think this makes it really more, um, it, it really makes you hold it in one hand and to not switch them back and forth. And like this here, it's the exact same knot that you're adding onto it, the double half hitch. It's just that there is a dowel instead of a cord in the middle. Okay, and my last tip, tip number five, is about understanding that the double half hitches are going to go wherever your travel cord goes. I think that's probably how it got its name of travel cord. And let me show you what I mean with that. So let's start like we did in the very first um, tip, the very first section, just holding the travel cord up. And so the double half hitches get really close to the Lark's head knots at the top. But then all of a sudden, if I pull my travel cord down like this, guess what? The double half hitches are going down with that travel cord. You see how we are starting to see this, this curve and I can't really like, as long as I'm holding this cord down, I can't really tighten the knot more than that. So it is extremely important how you are holding or which direction, let's say you're holding your cord. So this is again, something to pay attention to the direction you're holding your travel cord in, because this can create the different patterns that you might actually want in your work, or it may create some unwanted gaps or, or strange spaces in your design. So those were my five tips that I'm hoping will help you learn how to make the double half hitch knot. And if you're still here, that means you probably want to see that bonus tip. Now that bonus tip you may have already seen in my three hacks video. It is about how to make the double half hitch faster if you're working with really long cords, because those long cords, you don't want to be pulling them through those loops all the time. So here I've got some single strand, really long cords that I had, and I'll just show you in the regular speed mode first what that looks like and then I'll walk you through it. So basically I'm putting all these cords making the double half hitches on my hand then I pull through the travel rope and then I tighten all of the knots one by one like so. And I'm just doing a diagonal kind of shape or direction here and this is how fast I can make all of those double half hitches. Now let me show you with these last two cords what I was doing. So I'm making a loop where always the rest of the cord is closer to where my travel cord is. So first one like this, and then another one like this. Again, the travel, the, this cord being closer and inside 
the circle. And you can kind of see like these are the same circles just put together, the same loops. So that's one chord. And here comes the other. So this is what I make, put them together, and then I pull the travel chord through. And then I take them one by one, always making sure I'm tightening them in the right order. So first knot, first half of the knot first, and then the second half. Let me show you now going the other direction. So making the loop so that this chord is closer to my travel chord first. And then like this. This is the shape you should have. First loop, second loop. And then if we pull it through the travel chord, we can then tighten one by one, like so. Guys, try that one. It is so helpful, especially on projects like that chandelier where I had just rows and rows of double half hitches and I was working with those long cords. It cuts the time at least in half. And also, especially if you're working with those single strand cords that tend to tangle at the bottom if you have them really long, this cuts that off completely. There is no tangling in that process and it's just so smooth and so much faster. And that was my last tip for you guys. If you enjoy them, if these tips were helpful for you, give this video a like and let me know down in the comments which one of the tips was the most helpful, which one surprised you, you haven't heard it before. I would just really like to know. And I'll see you in my next video soon. Bye everyone.